So what's up? We're here today again with Benjamin Nathaniel Reddick II, the violence conductor, and we're doing a review on Disney's The Lion King. Now, there's not a whole lot of action in this movie. And also, I've heard a lot of talk that there's a whole lot of elements of wokeness and white supremacy in this particular film. And because of that, I don't think I'm the guy to do the review. So I've been reading some books, okay, specifically, the Wokeness Chronicle. Stay woke, don't fall asleep. They catch a Trying to get my woke quotient up so I could be black enough to talk about these subjects. In it, it kind of explains to you how to properly be woke in 2019. That's a whole other conversation. So I'm getting my blackness power up, right? My Nubianness is rising with every page that I read of this book. So I can't do this review. So I got a special guest in the studio today, Brother Cinnamon Azibu. <sighs> Welcome, my brothers. I'm Brother Cinnamon Azibu, and I'm here today to talk to you about The Lion King, or as we've been calling in the woke community, Lies of the white man about lions frolicking on the savannah and whatnot. But in real life, there's a whole lot of book messages in it, and we about to get all up inside that. Stay tuned. The movie starts off with a shot of the savannah, animals frolicking and whatnot. And there goes the king, bring his baby, little Simba, in front of everybody, let him know what he's finna run. That's all good. They did that. They did that. They do that in real life. Michael Jackson did that too. They talked about him for it. They do it with his lions. All of a sudden, it's a special moment. That's how they get you. That's racist right there. He's looking at the royal subjects that are bowing and celebrating and dancing for the birth of the one that's going to kill him. Lions eat everything on the savannah. How twisted is that? See right there? That's white supremacy. That's how white supremacy do it. There's a couple characters in this movie that I think represent a couple different individuals. First of all, Simba and his family clearly represents the patriarchy. Patriarchy. Grinding everybody beneath the heel. I know they make it all bright and su it's bright and shiny, and the sun is shining, and the, and the green grass is luscious when they're in charge. See, that's them trying to tell you that the only way that everybody else can be happy is when the white man is in charge. That, that's heavy stuff right there. Patriarchy. I want to talk about his scar. Notice that scar is a little bit darker than Mufasa is. I ain't even got to say it. You already know what they're saying with that. He's got his face scarred up. What they're saying is that you are not worth as much if you ain't pretty and you ain't got golden hair. It's because he's black. Scar joins up with the hyenas, outcasts. Where they live at is dirty. There ain't nothing for them to eat. They scavenge, living off the land like the Native Americans used to. Peep that. Check this. On a side note, I'm 117% Apache. Moving on. Now check this out. The hyenas are run by a woman. So what they saying right there is that women aren't as good as men because they don't like girls. See that? See that? That's the message they want to convey to you ladies out there. You ain't as good as men. See, it's the patriarchy all over this thing. Technically, Mufasa, I think they're supposed to be white. So that's the white supremacy situation transpiring right in front of your face. Now, here's what's interesting. You know, I don't want to give away too much of the story, but I think anybody reading it, listening to this review has already seen the previous version, and it's pretty much the exact same story. Scar tricks Mufasa, or tricks Mufasa into getting himself killed by tricking Simba. Now, what they're trying to say is that even though, this is where they twitch it up, they, they make Mufasa into being the black absentee father. He got this long hair, right? He in Africa, natural. And what does he do? When he hears the hyenas are causing problems in the streets, so the hyenas represent the streets in that scene. What does Mufasa do? He leaves Simba at the house to go and rip and run in them streets. See, they're making a comment about black America right there. I ain't like that one too much. So Simba is left at home with his mother and the women folk. See, they're trying to say that men need to be feminized. They're showing so many levels of wokeness that sometimes I think Mufasa's representing white patriarchy. Other times it's the black community. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. Mufasa and Scar are brothers. And of course the brothers don't get along and they different colors. Team white skin, hashtag team dark skin. In addition to that, check it out. Mufasa should have killed Scar when he was fighting for the title. 
but he ain't finished handling his business. And now, Scar is a generational curse passed down to Simba. So now, the young lion cub, the boy, got to take care of the business of his father. See that? That's another critique on the black community. I don't think I like that one there. I'm just saying, it's what they do. At some point, Mufasa is also being uh, taught or shown to portray hip hop culture. He's teaching Simba how to stalk Zanzu, how to kill the people who's supposed to be looking out for him. That's one of his people. They're saying that the rap music is teaching the young boys to be murderers, violent, and kill. And we promoting it through the music. I don't know if I agree with that, but that's what Disney was clearly saying with this movie and with this character. And in addition, one of the other things you gotta understand is the smaller characters all throughout the movie get bullied. Everybody trying to take a shot at Zazu. They're saying that if you ain't a big, strong, tough Negro, you ain't worth nothing, everybody gonna pick on you. Yeah. So there's a section where young Simba's talking to Uncle Scar about how he's gonna be king. What that is, now in that section, Simba's representing millennials, thinking they can do it better than the generations before them, and rub it in the face of the elders. That's all about that millennial entitlement. He ain't even have to work for it. He was just born fuzzy, fuzzy, fur, fur, fuzzy. He's just gonna be king. Scar been working his whole life, probably down in the mines. Scar could have been picking the cotton. We don't know. I'm just saying it's a possibility. All that hard work, Scar's on his face, grinding. Still ain't got no opportunity to be the king. That's messed up. Told you it's deeper than just cartoons, baby. Shinji, the hyena clan. Now Shinji is a strong, she's supposed to be a strong black woman. But she can't even eat until Mufasa playing the white patriarchy here, or Scar playing the white patriarchy, comes down to tell her he's gonna facilitate the process. Now, if you understand the end of the movie, spoiler alert, they end up attacking him in the end. They're stronger than Scar. That's because the black people united stronger than anything, but even the patriarchy, which is what Scar represents in that particular sequence. But they were saying the only way they can eat well is if the patriarchy ordained it. Gotta resist these things, folks. Timon and Pumbaa do their whole Hakuna Matata thing. There are no rules, there's no this, no that. And then Simba, just trying to express himself, being a young lion he is, goes to eat somebody. And they're like, yo, you can't do that. You can't have no meat around here. You gotta be a vegetarian. You know what that's about. They say they're inclusive, but they not though. But they not though. So what they are saying is deny yourself the meat that you need to be strong and powerful, young black man. Don't get the nutrients you need to rise and ascend, young black guy. Facts. Instead, eat these worms and these grubs. Now check that out. All the animals talking. I assume everything is alive, don't they? Don't the worms and the grubs, don't they got feelings and emotions and thoughts too? See, they marginalizing people because they ain't pretty and they smaller than them. They are the oppressed are oppressing the people that are smaller than them. They could have all been vegetarians, but they weren't trying to do that. But the bugs and the insects just getting killed all over the place. Don't nobody care nothing about them. And that's the real world right there. When Scar takes over and he starts his new situation, if you notice something, the, the earth starts to die. They talking about global warming and they're saying that no matter who you put in charge, they all part of the patriarchy. And what's gonna happen if you don't topple the patriarchy all together, whole world's gonna be over in about eight and a half years. I believe that, global warming. When we get to the section where, where young Simba has to rise up and take out Scar, it's like, how is he taking out Scar? They already proved to you in every scrap with Nala, every scrap with the girl, Queen Bee, Beyonce, you know what it is. She was a better fighter than he was. So why is she waiting for him to take out Scar when she more powerful than he is? See, that's just the white man and the patriarchy reinforcing the notion that women can't do nothing without a man being involved. And we know that ain't right. Feminism. Women are powerful creatures, young goddesses. You don't need no man, period. That's what this movie's saying right here. That's the lesson you should take from it, but it's not the lesson they was trying to teach y'all because they twisted in the mind. This is another note they was talking about, the fact that men have no loyalty out here. Notice how the moment the young girl comes in, young lioness looking all fine and whatnot, curves and all that, well, I don't know if lions have curves in all the right places, but fur in all the right places. I guess.
pedicure fresh. What does young Simba do? Bounces on the homies without even a word. He don't even tell them where they're going. They got to run and catch up. And it's also saying that the, what they were saying right there was a jab at the men folk. Without that girl coming in the end of the game, he'd have been fine to just chill out and let the world burn. My young brothers, I don't know how I feel about that, but it's what they said in the movie. Don't get mad at me. That's what Disney said they bring up a lot is the fact that everybody will do the will and work of the patriarchy. They're saying the patriarchy is too smart. The hyenas don't even like Simba. They wanted to eat his face off when they first met him. And guess what? In the end, they end up killing his enemy for him. They're doing his dirty work. No matter what you do, they always gonna win. You gotta resist. As you might know, Brother Cinnamon is evil to study a little Wing Chun, and I'm a purveyor of the 52 blocks, cause it's black, and a little bit of capoeira. I'm talking about the action and the hand speed that happened in this one section right here. Couple of decent fights, couple of decent fights. Some good chase scenes with Timon and Pumbaa. Of course, young Simba has no hands whatsoever. He's got plot strength, but somehow he defeats Scar. That sounds jacked up. I don't even really believe it, but we're just gonna let that ride because I don't actually know how lion combat works. I just don't think if Simba was a human being that he'd really be happy about it and he really had him hands. He wouldn't be ready to see what's up. Now Mufasa had hands. Mufasa, when he came to rescue them children, he killed like 15 hyenas by himself. He rolled solo, dolo into the battle, fighting for the future. He was biting stuff, smacking people in the face, open paw. Mm. Mm. It was fantastic. Probably my favorite part of the movie, even though I shouldn't have liked it because it was really a symbol of the patriarchy attacking those who've been marginalized. But hey, it was action. So I got it. It was action. I feel like this whole movie would have been way better if it had been rated R for realism. They just ain't woke enough to give us that real. Normally in these movies, they have some really good song action happen. I didn't really like this one all that much. First of all, it didn't have Elton John. And I know Elton John is white. He's a symbol of the patriarchy because he's a man. But he made the movie with Can You Feel the Love Tonight? And it's not in this one. So I just couldn't feel the love that night. I get our whole movie from the plot. I probably give it three out of five blades. It's not an original story. Can't really give him any points in the camera work because it wasn't really a camera, right? It was kind of just like in the 3D realm. So three, it's average. Action, it's not really a lot of action. So give him a three out of five on that. So we're looking at what, nine out of 15? I give it half a bonus point for level of wokeness. Three and a half blades out of five. Is it worth spending your heart on $15 for a regular price movie? Not if you've seen the original, no. It's a good movie, good for the children. You will enjoy yourself. I shed not one tear, cause I'm woke. My ancestors already shed all my tears. And that's Brother Cinema Azibu's Violence Conductor Review on The Lion King. Y'all stay up. It was just a movie.